Welcome to the Asian Connection Mortgage Podcast, where we connect Asian Canadians together to talk about anything related to real estate, mortgages, and finances, based out of Vancouver. Our host is John Lee, mortgage broker with the Rise Mortgage. Grab a bubble tea and enjoy the episode. Hey everyone, welcome to our episode. Today we are joined by Stanley Lamb. How's it going, Stanley? going great john good morning happy to be here yeah. for those who don't know you perhaps you can share a little bit about yourself how you got into the business and what you do for a living yeah so um you know i've been in the real estate business for eight years uh my mom has been a real estate agent for over 38 years um you know i wasn't always interested in real estate i come from a computer science background graduated from sfu uh, but, uh, you know, somehow, some way here I am in the real estate business eight years already. So, uh, it's been a good ride, always learning and, um, very interesting business. Amazing. Yeah. I hear that you focus more on pre-sales and also luxury properties as well, but today I do want to kind of pick your brains, um, pre-sales. Uh, but before we do that, I have some fun questions for you. Just to also test out how Asian you are. <laughs> so good. again, no right or wrong answers, but we just want to learn more about you. And first question, you know, if you could eat only one Asian dish for the rest of your life, what would it be? Wow. That's a, uh, it's quite a hard one, but, uh, I have a real special thing for pho and noodles. Oh. So if I could eat only one thing, I, I think I would go with pho. Nice, nice, nice. Yeah. I like pho as well. I'm going to challenge you a little bit more. What toppings would you want to have for your pho? Oh, I always go with the special. And, the special? Uh, the everything? Yeah. And yeah. shout outs to... Lynn Cafe and also uh, Pho 37. Those are two of my uh, favorite Pho places. Oh, so good. Yeah. yeah, especially like when it's rainy and cold, a bowl of large Pho is just amazing. Can't go wrong with it. Totally. <laughs> We're blessed with such good Pho here in Vancouver. So uh, yeah, just just happy to be here. Um. So I know... You love Vancouver, but I also understand you travel quite a bit as well. Um, mm. Which Asian city would you love to live in for at least a year? Oh, I would love to live in Shanghai, actually. Shanghai is just an amazing place. I've been going there a couple of times uh, the past couple of years, and uh, my cousin lives there. It's just a very hip, lively, and buzzling city yeah yeah that's why i hear i haven't been before but how others describe it is like the new york of asia would that be a good way to describe it i always think of hong kong but i feel like shanghai is like even next level yeah i mean it's 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 advanced a lot uh you know these past couple decades but the thing i love about it the most is just you know, the culture, there's a really good mix of classic and new, um, especially in the architecture, in the buildings, in the the food, you know, let alone Shanghainese food is, you know, world renowned. It's yeah. clean, it's it's safe. Um, you know, the shopping is great. And just just the people there are just, uh, just very lively, and happy. You mentioned about food. I know the food's really good in Shanghai, but what's the weirdest food combination you tried and actually liked? The weirdest <laughs> food combination? Um, well, it's not in Shanghai, but uh, one of the weirdest foods I've had is probably... And this is gonna sound weird, but um bring it. It's it's whale sperm. Whale sperm Ooh. is a delicacy in Japan. And 
Oh, I went to interesting. Omega, yeah, I went to Omekase uh, restaurant and, uh, you know, I didn't, obviously I didn't specifically order this, but it was just part of the, the meal. So, um, <laughs> and you probably have to pay a lot for it too. Yeah. Actually, I can't <laughs> say that I really, really enjoyed it because I found out what it was after I ate it. But, um, you know, oh, they wouldn't wise, tell you. Well, it doesn't really look like anything, you know, it just looks like, oh. uh, you know, a deep fried blob. So, uh, interesting. Yeah. So you <laughs> thought it was probably like chicken nuggets or something. <laughs> yeah. I thought it was some tempura something and it, it turned out to be, uh, well, apparently it's good for you too, as men. Oh, so <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, hook me up when next time you go. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds good. I'll definitely hook you up. <laughs> uh, last question would mm. be, what's your favorite Asian movie or TV show? Favorite Asian movie? And, and this can go show. back in the 90s too. Like the, the really like true classics. Whoa, whoa. This is, uh, this is a hard one, but... Um... Hmm. I don't know. I, I I really love martial arts, so I, mm -hmm. I really liked a lot of you know Jackie Chan movies and also uh, Ip Man. Ip Man Ip is Man? Uh, one of yep. my favorite uh, good Chinese movies. Yeah, and yeah, let's not like talk about like the Hong Kong TVB shows, right? Like those, I used to oh. watch some of those, and um... those are good back then. I don't know, like well now it's it's pretty much watered down. But yeah, I, yeah. I agree. Like Chinese, I think. Especially even Hollywood, when you think of Chinese movies, it's always mm -hmm. the like Jackie Chan, martial arts, Wong Fei Hong, like it's so yeah, cool, Rush right? They, like, and... Yeah, yeah. Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon, like they like fly through the air, like with like no effort at all when they jump. <laughs> like, <laughs> yes, how do they do yes. that? Like with on the a secret route, magic powers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, that's those are um, those are fun questions, and yeah. Like, Good to he oh, hear your answers. It's so interesting. But we want to dive into uh, your in your take on on pre sales, mm -hmm. and we're recording right now, August twenty eighth, twenty twenty four, and no, right now there is a current slowdown in the market, and mm -hmm. we're also hearing negative news surrounding the industry. So, how do you see the overall health of the pre sale construction market right now? Uh, well, you know, I think a lot of, um, you know, we're, we're in the heart of Vancouver and you see, there's a lot of new and big, big projects, uh, you know, getting built or in the process of getting built. I think it's just, um, a weird combination right now of just, you know, really high interest rates, lots of government regulation and new rules, you know, combined with, um, you know, just a, just a hard environment for investors out there. So, you know, a lot of these pre-sale projects, they, you know, have a mandate to reach a certain sales target, usually 60 to 70% in order for them to get their financing approved for construction. So I think we're seeing, uh, you know, pretty big crunch um, in this market. I think some developers, you know, are struggling because the sales just isn't, what it was a couple of years ago. Um, I think, you know, looking at some of the statistics, I think, uh, you know, some of the pre-sale absorption rate, which is, you know, the number of units released for sale versus how much gets sold. Um, it's reaching, you know, five, six year lows, um, almost, I'd say, you know, 10 to between 10 to 20% of the units release get sold. So there's a lot of units unsold and and we can see that by you know a lot of the incentives being offered on some of these projects so yeah so um, that's quite a lot of you know bad news and lots of doom and gloom i think we would read that on the news as well and people are getting a little bit nervous it's mm -hmm. definitely not a good time for developers but uh despite that well that some may argue that it's actually a, a good time for buyers. Uh, and in fact, it's actually a buyer's market. So can you talk about why this 
could be a good time for buyers to consider pre-sales? Yeah. So, I mean, you know, historically in Vancouver, um, a lot of times people who've bought in pre-sales, by the time it completes, you know, three, four years later, um, you know, the property is actually appreciated quite a bit. Uh, so, you know, it's a big, it's a big way to leverage your money and not get priced out in a rising market. And, you know, a couple of years ago, the Vancouver pre-sale market was just so hot. It was just, there was just so much demand for new construction homes to the point where, you know, if you didn't have, um, access to a good realtor or, or connections, you basically had no chance of getting a unit. A lot of people were fighting to get units. You would put in, you know, a sweet request and then you end up just not getting selected. So, um, you know, during that market, basically it was impossible to get a pre-sale or at least getting a good unit. Um, you know, times have, have changed now. Um, there's, there's a lot more selection availability and, um, you know, if you combine that with how, you know, it's predicted that interest rates are going to be lower in the next couple of years, mm -hmm. um, you know, it's actually a really favorable time for a buyer to go into a pre-sale and hope to aim for it to complete in a lower interest rate environment. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, I think it's actually, you know, it doesn't get any better than this in terms of opportunities for buyers in the pre-sale market. Yeah. No, we were also chatting about this before that you, you, you know, it's a good time when developers are also giving out incentives, mm -hmm. uh, and to it, attract buyers to buy pre-sales. What are some of the incentives that you're seeing in the market right now? Yeah, so we're starting to see quite a lot of different kind of incentives. Um, you know, one of the most you know common ones are are decorative allowances, which are basically discounts on completion. Uh, you know, typically deposits are, are at least twenty percent, but now we're seeing projects with deposits from five to ten percent uh, deposits. So you just put down you know, say 10% deposit, and then three, four years later, when it completes, you get your mortgage and, and uh, you know, you're ready to go. Uh, some of the more creative uh, incentives we are seeing is um, we're seeing free property management with rental guarantees, certain returns for the first one or two years. We're seeing strata fees included uh, for the first oh, one or two I years. I haven't heard of. Interesting. Yeah, so so that's a, a pretty big one. Um, you know, we're seeing, you know, furniture packages, free options, free air conditioning upgrades, uh, EV parking stalls, storage lockers. Um, and, you know, more recently, just because of how high the interest rates are, we're seeing certain projects um, partner up with banks and offer, you know, subsidized builder mortgages that are, you know, guaranteed with lower rates for a certain amount of time. So, um, you know, also we see like, you know, free cars, you know, <laughs> free, free vacations, you know, stuff like that. So, um, you know, the developers are getting creative. Yeah. That's definitely a long list. And yeah. it's really interesting because it's been many years since we've even heard any incentives. I remember for for people who are buying pre-sales they 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 uh view it like like going to tnt and buying vegetable it's like <laughs> do you want it or not if you don't someone else wants it and mm -hmm. you have what like what one hour to make a decision and you're buying something that is like at least six hundred thousand dollars and that's only for one bedroom some people want two or like three and it's even more expensive and you have to make a decision there and then right now and they don't, and they pressure you too. Do you remember when was the last time where developers are giving so many different types of incentives? How many years ago was that? Yeah, so I've I've never seen this before. 
Um, I mean, there were the good old days where it used, like when pre-sales were first introduced. I mean, pre-sales are actually a relatively new thing in Vancouver. I mean, there weren't pre-sales 30, 40 years ago. There were only, you know, buy when it's done. So, um, you know, we've seen, you know, there's there's certain early incentives that are usually available when you go in in the VIP phase or the friends and family phase where you can get, you know, a small discount. But in terms of lowering deposits or, or you know, 30, 40, 50, 100 grand decorative allowances, you know, I've just never seen this before. I mean, you know, when you mentioned people, you know, it's kind of like going to TNT buying a pre-sale because, you know, historically in Vancouver, if you bought a pre-sale, you know, chances are when it completes, you know, it's already appreciated, you know, mm -hmm. five, 10, you know, even 20, 30%. There are certain projects that were just, um, you know, certain areas, certain projects just went up in value so much. And that's why, you know, a lot of, you know, end users as well as investors would, you know, typically rush towards uh, getting a, you know, a pre-sale. And, you know, there's also a lot of advantages with pre-sales, right? I mean, you're getting a brand new home, you know, built to modern standards. You know, you have a new home warranty, 2510 mm -hmm. uh, covers you. And, you know, they have a lot of newer features like air conditioning and a lot of beautiful amenities and, you know, good quality construction. So, you know, there's always a lack of supply of, you know, good quality homes in Vancouver. And that's why... Mm -hmm. I think typically, um, you know, pre-sales have just been a really hot product. Yeah. And, and on top of that, you mentioned about, uh, uh, this, the, the warranty as well. There's also mm -hmm. the property transfer tax exemption too. I know the BC government, they, they up the limit to 1.1 mil. So yes. for those who are buying a pre-sale and they're planning to live in it and the purchase price, if it's less than 1.1 mil. No there's PTT. no property transfer tax yeah and yeah. that's huge savings uh so i i i think that definitely um directs people to consider pre-sales and mm -hmm. from what i heard and correct me if i'm wrong because it's the down market pre-sell prices are actually the same as resell properties it, 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 am i correct yeah, so I mean, typically, you know, typically when you buy a pre-sale, you're you're paying a, a future price at the current time. You're locking down a, a a future price right now. But you know, with how things are going in the market right now, uh, you know, we're seeing, you know, just brand new, newly built buildings that have just have a lot of mark uh, units coming onto market, and you know, the the price difference from older resale homes is just not that big of a difference. And, you know, typically pre-sales are kind of a predictor of the future market. But when you see mm -hmm. the, the brand new buildings complete and you have a lot of units coming out for sale that are, you know, similar to resale prices, well, you know, there's, it's a no-brainer to go with the newer home. Um, mm -hmm. You know, I mentioned the, the advantages before with the warranties and the amenities and, and, um, you know, just the peace of mind of getting a newer quality home and that lowers your risks with maintenance and, you know, issues with the building. So, uh, yeah. yeah, there's, there's actually a lot of good opportunities out there right mm -hmm. now. So I want to be the devil's advocate because I know mm -hmm. some people they're, they're listening to this and like, oh, of course, Stan's going to tell us all about it's an opportunity, all these good things. Cause he's a realtor. He wants to sell, mm -hmm. but I, I know you're not that guy, so I want to kind of flip it around and be like, okay, well, that's that's great. Those are good things, but let's hear let's hear all the dirt, all the all the risk, all the things that buyers should be aware of if they choose to purchase a pre-sale in today's market environment. Yeah, sounds good. I mean, obviously, we gotta weigh the the pros and cons and the mm -hmm. risks. So. Um, I guess, you know, one of the biggest risks of buying a pre-sale is just, you know, it's, it's, um, it's something that's going to happen in the future and things can change in your life. You know, the, the, the credit 
and lending mortgage environment could be different. And, you know, right now what we're seeing is a lot of people who bought these pre-sales, you know, two, three, four years before, and they're starting to complete now in this high interest environment. Um, you know, some buyers are struggling to get approved for a mortgage right now at these higher rates. You know, there are people that, you know, simply just cannot complete. They don't have the money or, you know, their life situation has changed. And they're, you know, one of the biggest risks is you get forced to lose your deposits. Mm -hmm. um, you forfeit your deposits if you're unable to complete on this home. Um, you know, there's also, you know, developers that, you know, promise a lot of things, promise a lot of quality and certain features. And by the time it's completed, you know, it may not be 100% exactly as how they marketed it as. Um, mm -hmm. You know, also, you know, if you're an investor, you know, the rental market is also tied into this. You know, are you able to get a renter in there? If you are able to get a renter in there, um, you know, how much can you rent it for? So one of the biggest risks for investors right now is that um, basically the uh, the rents aren't even close to covering the mortgage and the in and the insurance and the cost of holding the property. So um, yeah, you know, there's there's quite a lot of risks that you need to be careful, and that's why you need to work with a good realtor that's knowledgeable in the pre-sale market. You need mm -hmm. to pick your projects very carefully and even the specific unit itself you need to pick carefully uh don't go into it blindly walking in um you know into a, a developer's project presentation center and just you know just just lose yourself because you know these presentation centers are designed to be oh, yeah. extremely nice. beautiful yeah. and extremely mm -hmm. attractive and, um, you know, they, the salespeople there can be extremely helpful and knowledgeable, but you just got to keep in mind that they represent the developer and their job is just to sell you the home, um, regardless. So I always advise people to work with a realtor, have someone on your side when you go into these presentation centers and, and they can guide you through the process, you know, because it is, uh, a legal contract that you get into when you purchase a pre-sale and there are uh, risks involved. You mentioned about contracts and I think this is yeah. a good segue to talk about the legal aspect of it. And from what I hear uh, talking to other people with so much change changes in the, in the market, developers, uh, we all know they, they write their own contract, like the disclosure mm -hmm. statements and everything. There's a, a, a template that they fill out, uh, and you pretty much need to use their contracts in order to purchase it. Mm -hmm. So what are some key terms or clauses that buyers should pay closer attention to in today's market? Yeah. So there's, there's quite a few. I mean, one of the first things you really got to know, um, is the assignment terms and the assignment price. Um, basically, there's all these projects, they usually have an assignment clause that, you know, in case you, you cannot complete or, um, you know, life circumstances have changed, you may be able to assign your contract to someone else, either at a small profit or at cost or even below cost. Uh, mm -hmm. However, a lot of developers have certain requirements in order for you to assign. Uh, they also reserve the right to refuse any assignments. So some typical uh, restrictions would be um, you cannot publicly advertise this assignment. Um, you must list it at a certain price. Uh, you cannot assign it unless the project is 100% sold out. And typically developers would charge a, a assignment fee, which is a percentage of your purchase price or, um, you know, administration costs in order for you to assign. Mm -hmm. uh, one of the more bigger and newer sort of clauses we're seeing right now is there are, and that's why you, you know, you really need to be careful on, you know, what kind of pre-sale contracts you get into. Um, but, you know, one thing we're starting to see now is that developers are putting clauses in there where 
if their construction costs increase a certain amount, they reserve the right to increase the price of your home. Wow, that that's um, sneaky. Yeah, so that is something that you know it's a really, it's definitely not a good thing for buyers. But uh, it's just one way that some developers are, you know, kind of protecting themselves because you know costs are ever increasing. Uh, city mm -hmm. permit costs, construction costs, labor. So some of the, you know, smaller developers or, you know, certain developers that are a bit sticky, they may put in a clause like that. And, yeah. uh, you know, you end up, you know, you're buying a home for a certain price and then, you know, something happens like this and it ends up being way more expensive than you expected. So definitely keep an eye out for that. Yeah, that I can see that as a big concern, especially the newer developers, ones that don't have too much experience or they're not as reputable well mm. you mentioned that they need a certain percentage of sales so yes. they're like okay well we'll do that and we'll just like undercut everyone attract people to buy and then they can use that clause and be like well hey we we can't um we can't build this because prices have gone up so now, now that you're entered into the contract, now we're going to uh, up up the price. So then uh, we can cover the the cost to to build it. I don't know. I, I think I don't know if that has happened, but I can see how developers may be thinking that, especially the the newer ones, uh, because it is a very tough market. They need to get the project done they can't just hold on to the land because um there's holding costs and interest rates are so high so i, I think bottom line is you mentioned before not just to blindly pick a project or just even pick a unit you also need to figure out who the developer is and their background and whether or not they have the cash on hand to to weather the storm during this time yeah for sure and you know especially in Vancouver with so many high profile projects I mean you always see them sometimes in the news um, you know certain developers in trouble where their mm -hmm. financing is just not not solid so um, especially in this type of environment I think it's it's extra important to select projects from larger more reputable developers that have a good track record that, um, you know, have a stake in their construction, you know, some smaller developers, they just actually outsource and contract out the construction completely. And then you have developers with their own in-house construction company uh, or general contractors that are really reputable. And, you know, typically those kind of developers, um, you know, you, you won't have this type of issue. I mean, especially in this kind of credit environment right now, I'm sure we're going to start seeing some projects uh, get canceled, either not get built or, or you know, stops construction, uh, you know, midway in the process. So it's yeah. it's extra important to pick the right project and the right developer. Got it. So we covered quite a bit, mm. but uh, before we end this episode, is there anything else that you want to share with our listeners, like? First time home buyers or investors who are looking to purchase a pre sale condo right now? Yeah, you know, I would say, I would say for a lot of buyers right now, um, you know, especially first time home buyers, they, they may be in a, they may be scared to make a move. But, um, you know, from what I see in my experience, and not just because I'm a realtor, I actually think it's a really good opportunity for buyers to take advantage of this type of environment. I mean, I've never seen, um, you know, pre-sales and homes um, coming down in price like this with so many incentives. And, you know, we can never time the market in real estate. I mean, it's always said that you buy and you wait, but, um, you know, in a very hot market, you know, you're overpaying, you're overbidding, you're, you're not able to buy the home you want. And now, you know, the tides have turned and you have so many listings, so many projects, 
with so many incentives. Um, if your financing is strong, if you have the deposit money, it's a good time to lock into a pre-sell. And in the next couple of years, we're already predicting uh, you know, a lower interest environment. So if you time this right and you have an environment where it's so favorable for the buyers and when the building completes, it's going to be a better credit mortgage situation. I think the timing is actually very good. So, um, you know, don't be scared. Work with the right agent and the right mortgage brokers to make sure your financing is strong enough and ready and uh, take advantage of this opportunity because I've never seen the Vancouver pre-sale market like how it is right now. So for those who are looking to purchase a pre-sale and they don't know any other realtors, they want to contact mm -hmm. you, what's, what's the best way to connect with you? Yeah, the best way to connect with me is just, uh, you know, give me a call 604-773-3201 or check me out on Instagram. Uh, my IG is just Stanley Lamb Real Estate. I'm always posting about new projects and new opportunities. Uh, and also just visit my website, stanleylambprec.com. Amazing. All, all of that will also be in the show notes as well. So check that out and uh, connect with Stan if you have any more questions re with regards to pre-sales. Thank you so much, Stan. It was great Thank chatting you, with you. I always learn so much from you. Well, let's, let's see how the market goes in the next few months. Sounds great. It's a pleasure. Yeah. Thank you so much, John. Take care. Thank you. Thank you for tuning in. If you enjoyed today's episode, please consider giving us a review and subscribing to our podcast on your favorite platform. Thank you for listening. And we'll see you next time on the Asian Connection Mortgage Podcast.